Okay, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna walk you through updating the firmware on the Phantom 3 here. Now on the Phantom 2, it was a lot easier. You just kind of plug in your USB drive, open the software, and update it automatically. On the Phantom 3, for now at least, we have to do it manually. So it's a little more involved, and I wanna walk you through it following my steps over DJI steps even. There's a few extra precautions that I throw in there to prevent any errors and make sure each upgrade we do on here is successful. And I get a lot of people coming back to me telling me that they follow DJI steps and they have problems and they followed my steps and it worked every time. So here I'm gonna relay my tips and tricks and the full walkthrough for the Phantom 3. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is get the latest software downloaded to your computer so you can put it onto our USB drives and our SD cards to update each device. So go to DJI.com and then we're gonna go to Products, Phantom, Phantom 3, and then we're gonna pick which version we have. The standard just came out, that's why it's separate now. So I have a professional, so I went, I'll go there. And you go to Downloads. And then you pick your firmware. Though This is gonna be the latest firmware on the very top here. So if you have the Advanced, you would pick this one. If you had the Professional version, you pick this one. I have Professional, so I'll pick that and then you simply save it to your computer. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do is insert your SD card into the computer so we can format it so it's fresh and clean, no errors, and we can load the software onto there by itself. So we're gonna do uh, FAT32 default. Uh, we're gonna do default allocation size. Simple short label on there, quick format is just fine. And hit start and let it do that. We have a fresh SD card, so we have no programming errors. You don't not want that when you're doing this. Okay, now once the file has fully downloaded, it looks something like this with this file name to it. We're going to take that file and we're going to extract the contents out of it from the zip archive here. I use 7-zip. It's, it's free and it's very easy to use. works perfectly every time. So we're going to extract the files to a regular folder like this. And there'll be two files. I'm going to upgrade one, how to do it text version. You don't need that since we're following a visual uh, presentation of it. All I need is this bin file. And this bin file is the same file that's used to update both the controller and the aircraft itself. So we're going to take this file and we're going to put it onto the SD card and the USB drive for each one of the devices we're updating. Okay, time to put the update file onto the root directory of their SD card. So let's right click on it, hit copy, Go to the SD card we just formatted, and we're going to paste it onto there. And what this does is it gives it its own a version, clean version, of the update file. This way there's no cross-contamination with the controller and vice versa. So once the transfer fully completes on here, we can take the micro SD over to the Phantom and start the update finally. Okay, on to the actual update of the firmware on the aircraft here. We're going to do the aircraft first, and then we're going to move on to the remote control. A few notes before upgrading. Uh, your software on here is the first and foremost is to make sure your battery is at least 50% charged. And simply, you can just press on the back side here to check that. Mine's about three quarters, so we're just fine for an update on here. It doesn't take too long on there. The other part is DJI does not recommend doing updates while these blades are still attached because in case of malfunctions software wise inside while it's doing the update it can actually just take off or malfunction like that and be dangerous whereas if the blades are off obviously the motors will spin and it's not going nowhere so that's up to you. I keep mine on. Uh, the other important aspect of this is this shipping lock right here that holds the camera on the front here right there that holds the uh, camera, you want to make sure that that's off of there before we actually power it up because same thing as when we power it up any, power it up any other time, it's going to move around and do its self calibration on there so you don't want to ruin that. So get that off of there. Besides that, we can come over to here and there's a slot on the side of the, the camera right here for the SD card for filming. That's the one you're going to use with your files we put on the SD card. We're going to simply stick it into there, make sure it fully locks, okay? Like so, you hear that click like that? You can see it in there, fully 
uh, secured. After that, all you have to do is turn on the Phantom like normal from the back side here from the battery and it'll start updating and it'll flash red and green on the status indicator on here on the camera letting you know the update is in progress. Once it's done, it'll just turn off and you know you can turn off the craft and take that SD back to the computer to verify the update was done successfully. So we'll show you how this is done. Turn it on. Doing the calibration on there. And you can also hear the beeping of the craft on here. And that lets you know that it's doing the update. That right there means it's doing the update. And you can see the lights on here. Okay. They're flashing. And you can see the light in the front there on the camera platform right here. You see how it's going red, green, red, green, red, green. And then, of course, you hear the sound also. And your tone will change, and your status LED right here will go off. And that's how you know it's finished. Until then, let it sit and do the update so it can do it properly without any malfunctions on there, any corruption of the software. Okay, while the Phantom itself is updating in the background, you can probably hear it beeping back there, we're going to go ahead and get our USB drive set up for updating the remote control. So we're going to go over to the USB drive I have installed in there, and we're actually going to do the same thing. We're going to format it fresh and clean. Get it on the screen here. FAT32, default allocation size, and a simple label on here. And we can get that thing fresh and clear, free of any kind of errors. And the disc on there. And then we can go ahead, same thing, take our bin file, it's the same file, um, and put it onto the USB drive for the remote control in the root directory like this. So we'll transfer it onto there, and we can go ahead and update the remote control once the, the aircraft is done and turned off. It's very important. You want to do them separately. So let's make sure this transfers over with no errors, and we'll be set to go for the remote control also. Same thing applies for the remote control. Make sure that it has at least 50% battery power. It doesn't take too long like the aircraft does, but you want to make sure it doesn't die out during an update, obviously. So we're set to go on here. We can go ahead and wait for the other thing, the aircraft, to finish, and we can start the remote control. Okay, now depending on your firmware level, when you upgrade it, it may completely turn off the LED and stop beeping, or it may just... Um, keep beeping and the LED turns solid green. Either way, put your SD card back into your computer and there should be a text file written that says, well, it gives you information if it was uh, the update was successful or not. Here's the results. Upgrading result success. So it's finished upgrading on mine to the very latest level and it kept beeping and the light stayed um, uh, green on there instead of flashing red and green. Um, so mine was a couple levels behind, which is probably the reason why um, it's like that. From this point forward, it should be where it turns off the sound and the LED goes blank. So the aircraft is good to go. So let's go on to the remote control. We got our aircraft powered down. We can go to that. Okay, make sure your aircraft is off. Come over to your controller, make sure it's fully charged or at least 50% charged. And we're going to update this also. You ready to put the files, the bin file, onto our USB drive here? That's the way I prefer to update it. You can plug it in the back here and then simply turn it on. Press and hold. It'll power on. And you'll see the LED indicator on here turn blue, indicating it's actually updating the software on there. Right now you can see, you'll still see it's red on there. It's reading the SD back there, it's flashing. And it'll start the update process on there. See it turn blue like that? And then when it's done, this LED will turn green and it should stop beeping also. And that tells you that the update was successful 
and it's finished. And after about five minutes, it went to full solid green instead of blue, and it stopped beeping, so we know the update is done on here. We can go ahead and power cycle it off. Now once you've turned the remote control off, make sure you come back around the back side and get your USB drive out of there so we don't try to update it again upon power cycling it. And go ahead and plug back in your USB cord we use for our device. So that's all set back up. Now when you turn it back on, it should turn on like usual. Power up and it'll go red until it actually connects with the aircraft. Now we're back in regular mode, no weird beeping sounds. We know our remote is fully functional also. Just to be ver just to verify and be extra precautious, we're gonna take our USB drive back to the computer, do the same thing. We're gonna check that text file to make sure it's been updated successfully. Okay, back to the computer. Let's make sure that update was done correctly. This is our USB drive from the remote control. Same thing, I'll give you the results on there. Result upgrading success. And I'm not sure what this other one is here, this log. But the one you want, that's in general. I guess it's not part of it. Um, but either way, both of them say success on them for the upgrade status on there. Now, once you've upgraded to this version of software on here, after this, you'll be able to update your remote control through the, the DJI Go app. Uh, directly from it so that'd be a lot easier and yeah that's the wired connection still and you don't have to mess around with now once you've updated to this version of the uh, software on here after this point you will not need to do this old-fashioned way of the USB drive or SD drive uh, what you're going to need to do is connect up the uh, Go app from DJI and plug in your your device to the remote control and you can wire it in directly like that and update it that way it's a lot simpler uh, process than going through like this a lot more uh, graphical user interface type stuff so uh, after this be a much easier to do updates on the Phantom 3 software